You know how when you get into collecting watches, you start looking out for that one watch that's going to be sort of your main watch, the perfect watch, the watch you want to hold on to, wear every day, die, and then pass down to your kids. Well, I think I might have found that watch, for me anyways. And it actually came from kind of a surprising place. It's not a brand that was really on my radar until about a year ago. But let me show it to you. Today we're going to take a look at my new Yama Navy Graph uh, Marine National GMT Special Edition. Hey guys, welcome back to Just The Watch. My name's Dave, I live in Japan, and this is a channel all about collecting affordable watches. And if you're into collecting affordable watches, you might have an affordable grail, which is probably more where this kind of watch comes in. A lot of people would consider this to be sort of a mid-priced watch. You can get it on Yama's site for, I believe, around $1,000, just a little bit north of that. And for me, this has kind of turned into that grail watch that I never knew was my grail watch until I actually started looking at it. Now, full disclosure, I did get a discount on this watch. I paid the bulk of the price, but Yama did give me a discount knowing that I would review it. However, as is always the case, Yama did not have any input into the content of this review. And other than the discount, I didn't receive any compensation from them. And even though I absolutely love this watch and I hope it's a watch I'll be wearing until the day I die, there are some negatives. If you've been following Yama as a brand, you know there are concerns with their quality control and customer service. And yes, indeed, after I received this watch, I did immediately notice a quality control issue with it. I had to work through their customer service department to get it resolved. I'm gonna talk about all of that in this review. But despite all of that, despite the negatives that I will get into with this watch, I absolutely love it. Now, in this video, I'm going to be focusing primarily on the GMT features of this watch. I've already reviewed two other editions of the Yama Navy Graph. So if you're unfamiliar with the Navy Graph line at all, I recommend that you also take a look at my review of the original Yama Navy Graph Heritage. Or if you're curious of what the main differences are between the original Navy Graph Heritage and the Marine National Edition, then I would recommend you check out my review of the three-hand version, the non-GMT version of the Marine National, where I go into more details about that color scheme and the collaboration involved in it. So let's talk about the special limited edition Marine National GMT. Yema is France's premier watchmaker and they have a pretty long history. And a lot of that history does connect with the French military. Their watches have been used by the French Navy, by the French Air Force. Uh, they even have a space watch that was used by French astronauts. They had a little bit of a lull going through the quartz crisis, but in recent years they've been kind of revived as a French heritage brand. They've been bringing back a lot of their classic watches. And this one comes from their Navy Graph line. I reviewed the Navy Graph Heritage about a year ago, and I absolutely fell in love with it. But there were a couple of things that kind of kept me from wearing it every day. One, the loom wasn't that great, and two, it didn't have a date complication, which for me, in an everyday watch, that's kind of a must. I do have some watches that are no-date watches, and I really like them, but they don't tend to be the ones that I gravitate to on a daily basis. Fast forward to earlier this year, I come to find out that Yema is coming out with a new version of the Navy Graph in partnership with the French Navy, the Marine Nationale, and one of the additions is going to be a special edition GMT. Not only is it a GMT, but it also has a date, and they've changed up the color scheme and the loom formulation to go with a slightly brighter BGW-9. And if you guys know me, you know that GMTs is like my favorite complication. If I was ever going to have a grail, it was definitely going to be a GMT watch. So knowing that I already liked the Navy Graph form factor and design, this watch immediately shot up uh, to the top of my list and things that I was interested in. I contacted Yema, asked if I could get a discount if I reviewed the watch. They agreed, and here we are today. Now this watch is a limited edition watch and on their website they're saying they're down to I believe around 100 units left. So if you are interested in getting it, uh, you probably want to pick it up quick. It retails for $1,050 and here's what you're getting for that price. You get a 39 millimeter case with 19 millimeter lugs, 47 millimeters lug to lug, 13 millimeters thick, 300 meters of water resistance with a sapphire crystal and a sapphire bezel. And inside you're getting an in-house automatic Yema 3000 GMT movement. The case and bracelet are pretty much identical to the original Navy Graph Heritage. It's a very unique looking case design that I'm really drawn to with a thin mid case, kind of long slender lugs and a top hat style bezel that sits kind of proudly above the case. You get a fully brushed finish with a nice stainless steel bracelet that matches. 
This is a somewhat compact diver. It's not like a big bulky looking tool watch. It has a lot more elegance and yet it still maintains 300 meters of water resistance with sapphire crystal and bezel, so it's still a pretty rugged piece. That 39 millimeter size is very comfortable. It wears great on my wrist. Uh, the 47 millimeter lug to lug is also just perfect. And every time I've put this on my wrist, I feel like it just fits me perfectly. It's incredibly comfortable, incredibly versatile. I can wear it with pretty much any outfit and it looks absolutely stunning. I liked the original Navy Graph color scheme, but this kind of navy blue with really bright white indexes and hands uh, just looks so clean and crisp. And I love the red accents on the GMT hand. Just an incredibly classy looking watch. Let's talk specifically for a little bit about the GMT functions in this watch, because that is one of the very unique things about it. This has Yema's recently created in-house Yema 3000 GMT movement. And what Yema has done with their in-house movements is basically try to make them slightly better than the comparable Salida or ETA based movements. So the power reserve is a little bit longer at 42 hours. The out of the factory accuracy is rated a little bit better at plus or minus 10 seconds per day. And this one is actually running well within that spec at around negative four seconds a day. It ticks at 28,800 beats per an hour or eight ticks for a second, which gives it a very smooth, satisfying look especially with that long, slender, needle-like second hand. Additionally, this movement features both a GMT and a date function. The date has a nice, crisp, instant turnover at 12 o'clock, so you're not getting that kind of transitionary period that you get with a lot of the entry-level Seiko movements, where it takes a couple of hours for the date to fully switch over. And the GMT hand is independently adjustable. The GMT implementation on this one allows the GMT hand to jump by hours. The crown has three positions. The first one's for winding. The second one is for setting the date and the red GMT hand. If you rotate the crown counterclockwise, the GMT hand is going to jump backwards in reverse order in one hour increments. And then pulling it out to the third position will allow you to set the time. And the main time, date, and hour hand and GMT hand are all tied to that third position. So generally speaking, you're gonna set the main hour hand to your local time and then you're gonna jump the GMT hand to whichever time you want. In order to read the GMT hand, you have a 24 hour bezel. This is a bi-directional friction-based bezel, so there are no clicks, it's just a smooth turn. And I do kind of miss a clicking bezel. I think if I could have had my preference, I would have liked like a 48 click bi-directional bezel. I think would have been a little bit more fun, but the bezel is completely functional. It's got a good amount of resistance. It's not gonna get knocked out of place or too loose or anything. However, there are no 24 hour markings on the dial itself. So while they claim that you can use this to track a third time zone, in practice, it's kind of tough to do that. More often what I find myself doing is using the bezel to kind of temporarily uh, set the watch to a different time zone. So I always have the main hour hand set to my local time here in Japan. I have the GMT hand set to uh, Los Angeles time where I am originally from California. But if I have like a Zoom appointment or something with someone in a different time zone, I can kind of rotate the bezel to uh, set the GMT hand to a different time zone that way and then snap back to California time when I want to. Now the loom is another area where they've kind of gone with a totally different direction from the original Yemen Navy Graph heritage. On the Marine National Editions, they've switched it up and gone with BGW-9 which gives a crisp white look in the daylight and a nice cool ice blue glow in the dark. And I was very happy to see that the glow on this is significantly brighter than the original Yemen Navy Graph. The loom on the original Yemen Navy Graph was what I would consider to be kind of barely functional. It was definitely below average. And while the loom on this version isn't exceptionally bright, it does move into what I would consider to be kind of the average territory. So the loom is still not the strong point of this watch, but at least it's no longer a glaring weakness. The watch looks great in the dark and it maintains an acceptable level of performance. The hands do glow longer than the markers do. And while ideally you'd want the hands and markers to last the same length of time, if you're gonna have one be stronger than the other, you definitely want the hands to outlast the markers because you can at least still get an idea of what the time is, even if you can only see the hands. But again, the loom on the markers and the hands are both at what I would consider to be an acceptable and usable average level. I ran this watch through my J-Score loom test and it scored a very respectable six on the scale, absolutely crushing the original Yemen Navy Graph, which only scored a two. Now a score of six means that it is 60% as bright as Seiko's excellent Lumi Bright loom on their entry-level dive watches. As for reference, my Seiko Samurai scores a 10 on that scale. So I'm glad to see that in this edition, Yemen has kind of gone and corrected what I perceive to be one of the major flaws of the original Yemen Navy Graph heritage by amping up the loom to an acceptable level. Now let's talk about the quality control and the customer service experience that I had with Yemen. What I tend to hear a lot from people who have gotten watches from Yemen is one of two things. 
Either they get a watch that functions great and they absolutely love it, they love the design, they love the build quality, everything about it, or you get people that had a quality control issue that kind of turned them off and then an even worse customer service issue that turned them off even further and they've kind of abandoned the brand altogether. So what that shows, I think that Yamaha is going through kind of a little bit of growing pains in this new phase of their history and I hope that they're going to kind of overcome those issues and they'll be able to deliver these watches that people really are drawn to and really love that maintain a high quality standard and with good customer service to back them up. But let me tell you about my personal experience with Yema's quality control and customer service. Um, I've reviewed four watches from Yema here on the channel. Two of those four have had quality control issues, this watch being one of them. And the quality control issue on this one was relatively minor. It was a problem with the bracelet, not the watch itself. In my case, there was a pin on the clasp that was loose that when it fell out, the entire bracelet would kind of fall apart and become non-functional. So it's very dangerous to wear the watch that way because you risk the entire watch falling off your wrist and breaking. So it was a significant problem with the watch. I decided to contact Yema directly through their normal customer service channels rather than talking with the marketing people that I usually deal with. So I wanted to see how they would treat me as a normal person and not as a watch reviewer. So I went to their site, I opened up a chat and got pretty quickly connected with someone with a live chat. Um, I sent them some pictures of the watch and explained what was going on. And I asked them if they would be willing to send me a new bracelet and then I would send them the old bracelet back after I got the new one. And I felt like that would have been the best way to handle it. This was a brand new watch. I was a paying customer. It's not a good feeling. So I would have hoped they would have been willing to go there with me, but they said they were unwilling to do that. Instead, they sent me a prepaid DHL shipping label and asked me to ship the bracelet back to them. So they covered the cost of shipping, which was great. And then they said they'd look at the bracelet and either re repair it or replace it and send it back to me. And while I would have preferred to have them just send me a new bracelet straight away and then I shipped them the old one back, other than that, the customer service went really smoothly. Their turnaround time turned out to be faster than they initially predicted. It didn't incur any costs to me. They paid for, you know, they paid for expedited shipping, including a DHL pickup to come to my house and get the package. And I had my new bracelet back from France within a couple of weeks. So while I think there's some room for improvement on their customer service side, overall it went really smoothly and I didn't have any major problems with it. I was satisfied with the solution that they had. It was nice that my watch included a kind of cool elastic marine nationale strap. So I wound up just putting the watch on that elastic strap, kind of enjoyed it on that and getting a feel for that one for a week or two while I waited for the bracelet to come back. And even though I had a problem with the bracelet, the watch itself has functioned absolutely flawlessly, so I'm pretty happy about that as well. And while overall I do absolutely love this watch, I do still think that Yema's quality control um, is a concern. Again, I hope that's something that they're gonna be working through and continuing to improve on, but I think that would be the biggest negative about this watch. But that said, at the end of it, having the watch right now, I couldn't be happier with it. I might still be in the honeymoon phase a bit with this, but even with that quality control issue, this has quickly become my favorite watch. Again, if you're interested in getting this watch, I'll leave a link to it down below. Uh, they are selling out, it is a limited edition. And as always, I would love to hear your guys' comments down below. Love to know what you think of Yema as a brand, this watch in particular. And don't forget to check out the t-shirt store where I'm selling this t-shirt that I'm wearing along with a lot of other cool watch-themed t-shirts. Thank you guys for watching, we'll see you next time. Bye.